Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so last time we talked about the centroid, center mass, center of gravity, all of that stuff. And that one, I would say, in my opinion, makes more sense. It makes a lot of sense because, like, okay, I'm trying to balance a plate, I find the centroid, and I can balance. That's what you're doing, more or less. Um, and it's just kind of a physical thing. I got a big ball, where does that kind of act? Today, we're going to talk about the moment of inertia um, for areas and for other things, and also the radi radius of gyration for an area. This one, it's um, physically not so easy to understand, but we'll we'll talk about it as we go. Okay, so as you can see right here, we're going to learn about how to calculate both of these um, through some different ways. So let's talk about it. First off, why do you care? Well, one thing, uh, many structural members have strange shapes, like an I, or an H, or a C. But why do they have those shapes? Like why an I? Why don't we turn that beam on its side? You know, can we do that? We can't. It would be horrible. Um, don't ever let anyone do that. I mean, it's still super strong. It won't be mattering too much if it's just your body on there. But honestly, um, don't build buildings that way. There is a reason for this. And the reason for that is the moment of inertia. It helps us understand why we would want our beam oriented this way rather than the opposite. Another thing is, why do we want to have... Why don't we have a solid beam? Why isn't it just full of metal, um, like you have a full wooden cross section? Well, why? Um, the answer is because of the moment of inertia. All that metal really doesn't do much. The metal up here, metal down there, is actually what's going to help make this super stiff and strong. So let's keep going. Now. Another thing we notice is that there's a lot of tubes. And they're not ever solid. They're always very, very hollow. Um, the reason for this comes down to moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is going to tell us how easily something bends. The higher moment of inertia, the less likely it is to bend. Um, and the fact of the matter is that hollow thing and a solid thing, you don't really gain all that much in the moment of inertia. Um, you're just wasting material. So when it comes to strength to cost, you want to do a hollow tube rather than a solid tube. And if you take my solid mechanics class, you'll really see that a lot. Okay. So, moment of inertia for areas. Areas. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm a little too much fun here. So, let's say we have a plate and submerged in a liquid. We have pressure applying to the whole surface of that plate. Um, and we know the pressure of a liquid at a distance y down. And we can actually figure that out. We have some sort of you know, function here. OK, so pressure is going to be equal to um, gamma times y. Or this is the specific weight of the liquid. Now, if we want to figure out the force on the area at that point, well, it's simply equal to pressure times that area element. And then if we wanted to find the moment about the x-axis due to this force, well, then we would integrate. We would integrate the distance times the force, which, through some math, we can figure out is going to be equal to the specific weight times y squared dA. Now, this is for a plate underneath water. However, this integral right here, this integral is the moment of inertia. We use this a lot in solid mechanics, like I said. If you take that next semester, basically we're going in mechanical engineering. Um, it's good for determining stresses or how much you know, internal force there is and deflection, how much has it been. Okay, now the big thing to think about here is that moment inertia is always about the centroid. You're turning something about its centroid. If you're not, if you're deciding to turn it around the top or the bottom, well, things change, the different equations. For most cases, we're turning it about the centroid. Um, the second thing to think about is that for a moment of inertia, since it's that y squared dA, y squared dA, well, the distance you are away from that centroid, that's the y, is the most important thing. So you put most of your area really far away from the centroid. Because if it's on the centroid, it literally does nothing for moment of inertia. If you had a whole bunch of mass right here, like this one right here, it has very little to keep you from bending. That's why you see um, diving boards that are shaped like this and not like this. This is like the joist in your house. 
this is like a diving board. This bends, this one, well, it still bends some, just not nearly as much. Okay, so in looking at these, which of these are going to deflect the most? Well, this one will, because it's shaped like a diving board. And because most of its mass is right there at the centroid, y squared dA. The area, in this case, um, is less important than the distance from the centroid. So this one had to have a much bigger moment of inertia because most of its area is far away. It's over here. While for these two, it's closer to the centroid. And for this one, it's very, very close to the centroid. So we have very, very little on moment of inertia. Okay. Now, let's look at it this way. We have multiple ways of turning something. Previously, it was in y squared dA, but as you might guess, that's around the x-axis. What about around the y-axis? Well, that would be x squared dA. And you can also have your polar moment inertia, which is r squared dA. What's the distance from the centroid to that particular point? And interestingly enough, your polar moment inertia is simply equal to your moment inertia around the x-axis plus your moment inertia around the y-axis. Um, we sometimes get this referred to moment inertia as the second moment of an area. And it has units of length to the fourth power. Um, I'll be super honest with you. Moment of inertia, second moment of area. It might not make sense. I like moment of inertia the most because inertia is your resistance to movement. And so if you think about this, like, okay, moment of inertia, moment, just a kind of weird word, but inertia, it doesn't want to move. The higher your moment of inertia, the less it's going to deflect. So remember that, okay? The more moment of inertia you have, the less it's going to move in that particular direction. Okay, so we'll stop here for this time, and the next time we're going to talk about how you can solve this using integration. So I hope this helped you, and I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.